Hey guys, Mike Bills, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at and testing this Watt Cycle 314 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. This is one of their smart edition mini sized batteries and it's mini due to the fact that it's a 314 amp hour battery, but it's about the same size as a lot of the other 300 amp hour batteries on the market. And it's only slightly bigger than a normal size 100 amp hour battery. This battery is equipped with a 200 amp smart BMS so we can connect our phone to it and be able to monitor all the stats of the battery. We're definitely gonna download the app and check that out see how much information we get out of it. This is 314 amp hours and that's over four kilowatt hours, just barely over, but you still get four kilowatt hours in one package. They say it has a 10 year cycle life, grade A cells. I'm really curious to see what cells they have in this. It weighs 59 pounds, so very heavy. As far as the other dimensions, it is 13 and three quarter inches long, seven and a quarter inch wide, and nine and three quarter inches tall. And if we put that next to a standard 100 amp hour battery, you can see it's almost the exact same size, but you get way more capacity out of this without much more of a footprint. Now it does weigh almost three times as more but that just is what it is when it comes to batteries so just make sure you be careful when you're lifting it so you don't hurt your back i have seen a couple other reviews on the watt cycle batteries and they appear to be pretty good and the build quality looks pretty solid so i'm very excited to test it i've never had a watt cycle on the channel in the box you also get your terminals these are m8 bolts and you get the little caps like they all come with it also comes with a manual it tells you how to get the app in the manual it kind of goes over all the specs of all their different batteries they have a ton so pretty interesting if you want to read through that just a bunch of other specs about the battery how to connect them up in series and parallel and that's really it always a good idea to skim through your manual you never know there might be something useful in there and at the time of making this video this battery is for sale right now on amazon for 549 dollars so in this video we're going to test and see if this thing's any good we're going to fully charge it do a full capacity discharge test then we're going to do a full amperage discharge test to see if we can pull 200 amps and more make sure the bms actually shuts down above 200 amps and make sure it can support 200 amps continuously. Then we're actually gonna take the battery apart, look inside of it, take a look at the cell, judge the build quality for ourselves, try to identify the brand of the BMS and all that good stuff, and just kind of see what we're getting for our money. So I'm really excited to test this battery and let's get to it. I went and downloaded the Watt Cycle app. It did not make me create an account in order to register or do any of that. It literally just opened the app and right here, here's our battery right there. We're gonna go ahead and open it up and let it connect. And there we go, it says we're at 40%, so that's perfect for shipping, not a problem. We're gonna go through here and see what other things we can see on the app. So right now it's in standby because they're not charging. All right, and that's really it. You really don't see a whole lot more. It literally just tells you if you're charging, discharging. It shows an amperage meter, a wattage meter, your state of charge, and that's pretty much all you get. I don't see a tab where you can actually look at the cells themselves. So kind of a bummer, but to some people it doesn't really matter. You just want to be able to monitor the battery, make sure you don't have any faults, and have an accurate state of discharge of the battery. All right, we're going to go ahead and connect our 30 amp charger to this thing. And there we go. It shows it's charging. So we're going to let this thing fully charge so we can start our capacity test. All right, guys, we got our watt cycle battery fully recharged. We're going to go ahead and get our amp meter set up here. So everything's reset. It's set to a 100%. I set the amp hours to 314. And right here where it says total amp hours, that's going to count how many amp hours we get out of the battery. I'm going to run this test at a 0.2C load, which is going to be about 62 amps. The closest I could get it to is about 60 amps on the charge verter side of things. So we're going to run it at 60 amps and we'll see what the capacity is. This test should take about five hours. We just completed the capacity test on our watt cycle battery and we got 315.4 amp hours. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fully recharge the battery so we can start doing a full current discharge test to see if the high current protection works. So I got the battery fully recharged. We're now gonna do some load testing. So the battery's rated at 200 amps and I have enough appliances we can plug into this to give us more than 200 amps, up to 300 if we need it. The first load I'm gonna turn on is gonna be our charge verter and that's gonna charge our 48 volt battery bank. So this is what the charge verter looks like. It's basically just a massive battery charger. Once we get the charge verter going, we're gonna plug in this 1500 watt space heater and then if I need to, I have an additional 12 volt 30 amp charger that can put another 400 watts on load on the system. And those three combined should give us as much power as we can hopefully pull out of the battery. Hopefully you guys can see our little display, but so far we are at 103 amps. Next, I'm gonna turn on the space heater on low. Looks like that got us to over 180 amps and the voltage is steadily holding at 12.8, 12.79. That's really good. Now we're gonna kick it on high. All right, there we go. We're over 200 amps. So let's see how long the load will run. We're pulling over 3000 watts. We're actually, oh, there it went. It just shut off. So that was quick. It actually worked really good. Okay, the battery just now powered up. It took about 30 seconds for the BMS to restart. Very happy to see the high current protection works. I love to see that. That is awesome. Next, we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at the inside, see what we got. Oh, got it open. Let me go ahead and try to get these bus bars loose that hold the cover on to the main terminals. It actually doesn't use wires. It uses these large 
almost like large stranded bus bars. It's stranded wire in there, you can feel it, but you can see how massive they are. This is probably one inch and it's all covered in heat shrink for the positive and the negative, so that will handle a lot of power. Never seen that in a battery before, very interesting. And the connections where they're made to the actual battery from the BMS are really good. Just a massive bus bar, no wire. Same thing, and then your positive bus bar goes straight to the positive bus bar of the battery itself. Here's a better look at that. That is very robust. Connections here look really good and very secured. And you can just tell how much material is on this. You can kind of see some of the stranding back there. And these literally look like giant like battery bus bars that you would use just connect battery cells together. So we have a nice, large, beefy BMS. We have massive bus bars instead of wiring, like I said before, to go from your main negative terminal to the BMS and then out of the BMS to our negative terminal. There's all the model information of the BMS. It's a very beefy BMS, has a large heat sink on there. And this thing's not even warm, even though we just pulled almost 300 amps through it. So right here, we actually have some metal. So this is gonna be what feels like a metal frame is what encapsulates the cell. So we have a metal frame end cap here with this little riser in order to kind of provide a shelf for the lid to sit on. Then it's kind of hard to see, but right here is a metal bar. And that metal bar runs the whole length of the battery to the other side. So we have an entire metal cage encasing our cells, as well as giving something for the BMS to be mounted on. So that's really good to see that. I love seeing metal frames and batteries. Right here, it looks like we have a temperature probe. This is gonna be our balancing harness for the cells themselves. This is gonna to go to our Bluetooth module. So it runs over here down the center and goes to right this little module right there. I'm gonna very carefully try to remove this top plate so we can get a look at the cells a little bit closer. There is insulation material between each cell. You can see a little bit of it here. We have nice, massive bus bars, really nice laser welded terminals. We have an expansion gap between the bus bars to let the battery expand. More insulation here. And it's hard to see, but on the sides where the metal frame is, there's also a piece of insulation between the battery cell case and the frame itself. Looks like we can get this loose if we're really careful. And there's a really good look at that metal bar that's sort of acting like a spine as well as helping hold the battery cells in place. So I'm gonna carefully lay this to the side just like that. So you see our nicely connected balance wires, those all look good. Temperature sensor is actually attached to the battery cell so that's good to see as well. And actually we have two temp sensors. We have one here and we have one here. Next, we're gonna to try to figure out what the QR code will pick up. You may not be able to get close enough with the Osmo camera. Here's the result of the QR code. So it gives you the code right there. It says this is from a manufacturer called Rept Battero. It says they're 320 amp hour cells. That's kind of interesting. And they were made in middle of 2024. Let's go to the website. And the website is actually in English. So I haven't seen that battery cell brand before. If any of you guys have heard of that, please let me know in the comments. It's very interesting that they're rated at 320 amp hours, but the battery is only rated at 314. So it did technically pass, but that's really it guys. Nothing really much more to see. This BMS does look really heavy duty. Massive, massive heat sink, even on the bottom. It's got a giant piece of aluminum. So the BMS they're using it's Bluetooth enabled, it's very heavy duty, and the high current discharge protection actually works. So whatever BMS this is, is a very high quality BMS. I went ahead and removed the temperature sensors from the batteries just so we can actually test the low temperature protection. So we have a 30 amp battery charger. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery charger to the battery. And then we're gonna take the temperature sensors and submerge them in the ice water. All right, I went ahead and opened the app. The battery's still charging. I think this charging temperature, I think this temperature right here that's being displayed is actually the temp of the BMS. But we are getting a warning message right here. And if we click on that, it shows that message there. What I assume that means is charging under temp alarm. But when we click on it, it doesn't really give us any more information. But the battery is still continuing to charge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the probes out of the ice water and warm them up and see if the charge alarm goes away. And yep, there you go, the warning went away. So it is registering that the battery is cold. It did not cut off charging. It's possible I'm not getting these cold enough or because the BMS's temperature doesn't match what the probes is saying that it's not gonna shut off charging. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up us testing this Watt Cycle 314 amp hour battery. It passed all the testing we gave it, has high current protection that actually works. The low temperature charging protection I read on their website only works below four degrees Fahrenheit, so more than likely I wasn't getting it cold enough, but you guys can be the judge on that. And if you've used this battery and got it to work, maybe let me know what temperature it does work. Build quality looked really good. The BMS looked really good, has Bluetooth, all the bells and whistles that you'd want out of a medium grade, medium priced point battery. 300 amp hour batteries are becoming really popular on the market, and I think this one is a really good choice. They make a bunch of different size and capacity of batteries in 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt. They also make super, super huge capacity 12 volt batteries. They actually have a 628 amp hour battery as well. 
maybe in the future I can get my hands on one of those. That'd be kind of cool to test. I've seen a lot of other videos on the watt cycle batteries and people seem to have pretty good luck with them. So hopefully this thing holds up in the long term. I'm gonna put it in service with the rest of my 12 volt batteries and my 12 volt solar power system. So we will continue to test and use this battery in real world situations. As always, let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.